So we finished off with question 2.3, I mean 3.2, now we go to 3.3. So what have we got here? We have a male long-tailed widow birds um, have extremely long tail feathers, okay, that they use in their mating displays to attract the females. Now, those are called your courtship rituals, okay, and that's probably why the male birds all look so gorgeous and the female birds are so dowdy because they have to prance around and they have to display themselves and then the female takes her pick of which male she wants. All right, so the scientists conducted an investigation to determine, now if you look at the aim of the experiment, it will be to determine the relationship between the length of the male long-tailed willow bird's tail, all right, and its mating success. So, number one, this will give you your aim, okay, to determine. Number two, it is also, it tells you the relationship, the length of the male long-tailed widow bird's tail. This is going to be your independent variable, all right, all right, and this, its mating success is what is going to be measured. So this is your dependent variable. So you are given that information within the statement to start off with. Your independent variable is going to be the focus of this experiment, all right, or investigation, and your dependent variable, remember dromi. So, um, let me just zap down here. Oi. D, D, R, O, M, Y, okay? This is your dependent or resulting variable that is observed, in other words, with your senses, or measured. Okay, so you know what measured is. You're going to measure it with, with a means, temperature, levels, etc and is plotted on the y-axis. So that is how you know what your dependent variable is. It's the resulting variable that is observed or measured and it's plotted on the y-axis. So D-R-O-M-Y and that's how you remember it. While your dependent variable is always the focus of the experiment. They're going to be looking at the length of the male long-tail widow bird's tail. All right, so the procedure was as follows, and here we go. The first thing is a total of 27 male birds were sampled and divided into three equal groups. So that is a nice large sample and therefore, it talks to the reliability of this investigation. Remember, what tells you about the reliability of an investigation is the sample size, repeating the investigation a couple of times, getting an average. All of those are or will talk to the reliability of the investigation. Anything that says the same, so same, 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 that is going to tell you about the validity of the experiment. All right, so we've got a nice big sample size, and they're divided into three equal groups. So the tail feathers of the birds of each group were treated as the follows. We have got group one, they cut them short, okay? Group two, they made them longer, by adding artificial feathers. I mean, that's quite ridiculous. And then three, they left unchanged. This would be your control group. Okay, and you would use the control group to check whether one and two 
are, are effective. All right, then. The three groups of the male long-tailed widow birds, along with the female long-tailed widow birds, were released into the environment that was suitable for mating. Okay, so I'm assuming that they had lots of space and they were happy and they had food, etc. Each time a pair mated successfully, that they produced a nest, okay, and all the nests were counted. Now, the fact that the nests are counted, that talks to the dromy that I told you about just now. This would be measured. So this would be the dependent variable that is measured. All right. The average, there we go, talks to reliability again. Number of nests produced by each group was calculated and then um, and used as an indication of the mating success. So if they produced lots of nests, okay, then it means there was, it was successful. So group one, remember group one, they had the short tails. Group two had the longer ones. And group three was same. It was left the same. It was unchanged. They are our control. So what do we have? The short tails, sham, they made half a nest. Okay, remember they're getting an average of so a 0.5. The longer had 2.5 and the same had 1. So remember we're looking at the average, that's why it's 0.5. Okay, and now we go down. And I'm not sure why this thing is doing what it's doing. Okay, so it says, name the reproductive isolating mechanism that occurred in long-tailed widows. Well, that's easy. It is species specific courtship rituals. We have species-specific courtship rituals as well as human beings. Um, if a guy likes a girl, he takes her out, he wines and dines her, he buys her nice gifts. Um, eventually they get engaged, okay, and then they get married and they have children. So those, we all, all organisms have some form of courtship rituals, even bees. Okay, so let's just go down. And now I've gone up too much. Okay, now they want the independent variable in this investigation. We've already said it is the length of the male bird's tails. Okay, because if you recall right at the top here, what did we have? It was the length of the male long-tailed willow bird's tail. Okay, so you can just say the length of the tail. And now it's stopped bouncing around. Hallelujah. All right, explain why 27 long-tailed willow bird, widow birds were used in the investigation instead of only three. Well, the larger sample size increases... The reliability of the investigation. Okay, so what they would have wanted here is the largest sample size, the reliability, and there you go. Two easy peasy marks. Explain why group three was included in the investigation. So let's just quickly refer you back. Group three were the guys with the, where the tails were left unchanged, okay? They are your control group. So, we are going to write here to serve as a control group to compare um, groups one and two, two, okay, to prove, 
to prove, and both twos here are correct, to prove that the length of the male bird's tails was the only factor that affected mating success. You could have written this in a, a lot of different ways. As long as you um, explained that group three was the control group and that the success of one and two were measured based on the norm, which was the control group. So that would have shown that it was the length of the tail. Because when it was short, there were less nests. When, there were, when it was longer, there were more nests than normal. Okay. Oh, my. Draw a bar graph to represent the results of this investigation. Okay, people, you must remember that a bar graph has spaces between it because it is discontinuous. You're talking about three different groups. You're not measuring um, height, which is continuous, or eye color, which is continuous. You're measuring a specific group each time. So please make sure you know the difference between, well, a line, a line graph is easy, but between a bar graph, a histogram, and please make sure you know how to uh, um, draw and put together based on a table of results, a pie chart. All right, Th those are skills you must know in an exam. Okay, so let's draw our bar graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is the heading. So the heading is going to be, um, let's just go back and check. It's the average number of nests produced. So the average number of nests produced um, by each group of birds. And we've got three groups. Okay? So, remember we're going to have an, a y-axis and we have an x-axis. So there's my x and there's my y-axis. Remember I said your independent variable, that was the average number of nests produced. Because that is what informed about the success of whether the tails long or short tails. We start off with zero and then we have naught comma five and then we'll have one and one comma five and two and two comma five and don't stop at two comma five because I know that our table only had to two of comma five but go to three. Okay, now on the x-axis, this is our dependent variable, all we have here are our three, uh, our groups. Oh man, let's just fix this quickly. Groups. Okay, so we're going to have group one and group one, let's just refresh here. Group one was 0, 0,5. So group one was, so I'm going to do it here, was 0, 0,5. There's my bar. All right. And then exactly the same space away, I'm going to start my next one. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, that was 2.5. So group two is 2.5. So this is going to go to, hey, it's a bit difficult when you don't have a ruler. Okay. So there's 2.5. So this is group one. This is group two, and then group three went to one. So that would be group three. So there you go. And this 
gives you six beautiful marks. One, two, three, four, oh, sorry, five. That's two for that. And then if you had the correct scale here, it's a half and correct numbers here is half. So there's your six marks. Thank you for coming. Then state a conclusion for this investigation. Well, look at what you were investigating. The investigation here was to determine the relationship between the length of the male long-tailed widow bird's tail, okay, and its mating success. So what would your conclusion be? And if we look at our results, the longer the tail, all right, of the male blah, 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 the higher the mating success. So that's what we're going to write. So here we go. The longer the tail of the male long tail <laughs> widow bird the higher the mating success rate. Okay? And I'm sure you could just have said the longer the tail of the male bird, the higher the mating. So you could have left out long tail widow bird. Right, there you go. Two marks for nothing. It's for jam. <laughs>